Hey, how are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Why the universe? The creation of the universe out of nothing. Let's make our terms clear. What is the universe? It's everything that exists. But when we talk between each other, we don't start enumerating every real object that exists. Space, time, galaxies, stars, the Earth, us. We find one word, we generalize, make an abstraction, and use only one word to specify all that. And everybody knows that word. In this way, we make the communication easier. But the universe is not a thing. It doesn't have boundaries so that there is nothingness beyond it. There is no beyond the universe because the universe is not a thing. There can't be anything outside space. It is meaningless to talk about spaceless. Same thing with timeless. We can't talk about before time started because it's meaningless to say timeless. There was no time then. There was no then. That's what we humans do when we, when Homo sapiens evolved a very complex brain with billions of neurons, billions of electrically charged neurons which fire and make synapses, bonds between each other, trillions of them. In that way, we are able to think. And we made language, symbolic representation. We generalize, make abstractions, and that's how we are able to think and communicate. It is also meaningless to talk of being and non-being. Because to be is not even a verb, it's a copula. When we say the cat is on the map, the cat is already a real object that we talk about. The cat is, is, or to be, does not substantiate, does not entify the cat. It only points to a state that the, the cat is in. The cat is on the map, the cat is black, the cat is angry. It doesn't make sense to say the cat is. Or let's take the sentence, John is a soldier. This sentence in Russian is Ivan, soldat. Ivan, John, soldat, soldier. In Russian, the copula is depleted. It's not even used. That is why it is nonsensical to talk about the being of something that is real, a real object. What philosophers have always done is stating of the being of something as a separate entity, as a separate ontological entity, apart from the real object. So it is meaningless to talk about the being of the cat. The cat is already. It doesn't have a separate being. And uh, this, to talk about non-being is also meaningless. We can't say that the number three is an object, is an entity that exists somewhere in a platonic universe. We can't say that the number seven exists anywhere. It is an abstract no notion in our mind. Talking about mind, the evolved, very complex human brain makes it possible for us to think there is consciousness. But consciousness is not a thing that exists, that can exist separately, independently from the embodied human brain. The same thing with mind. Mind is only what our very complex brain does. It's not a separate entity that exists. Let me give two reasons why I think this is a personal creator. First, the personhood of the first cause is implied by its timelessness and immateriality. 
You see, the only entities that we know of that can possess those properties are either abstract objects like numbers or else a an unembodied mind or consciousness. The number three is not a separate entity, an object that exists in some platonic reality, which does not exist. <laughs> the number seven is not a separate thing that exists somewhere. It is an abstract notion in our mind. The very complex human brain does mind, does consciousness. That's how we are able to think. We make symbolic representations. We generalize and uh, make abstractions. That's how we are able to communicate, to think and communicate. Consciousness is what the very complex human brain does. It's not a thing, separate entity that exists apart from the embodied human brain. Mind is the same thing. Mind is what the brain does. It's not a thing. We find one word, mind, but it's not a separate entity that exists independent and separate from the human brain. Is that primitive philosophical thinking, Mr. Craig? Oh, I, I'm just utterly bewildered at how, how people are taken in by this sort of lack of rigorous thinking, and I'm just doing my best to try to counter it.